Okay, now we're actually going to be using the p-value to determine whether we should reject or not reject the null hypothesis. So we have resveratrol is an ingredient in red wine and grapes. It's been shown to promote weight loss in animals. In one study, a sample of lemurs had various measurements taken before and after receiving resveratrol supplements for four weeks. For each p-value given, indicate the formal generic conclusion as well as a conclusion in context. Use the 5% significance level. Okay, in the test to see if the mean resting metabolic rate is higher after treatment, the p-value is 0 0.013. So what we need to do is compare to see if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level. So in this case is 0 0.013 less than or equal to 0 0.05. The, question, the response is yes. So if it is, our generic conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. That means 5% is our cutoff, and this is 1.3%, so there's a 1.3% chance of the results happening by chance, which is very small. So if we reject the null hypothesis, we are then saying that there is evidence that metabolism or the metabolic rate is higher after receiving resveratrol. Now if we look at the next one, now we're testing to see if mean body mass is lower after treatment. Again, compare p-value, see if it's less than or equal to the significance level. So it's 0 0.007 less than or equal to 0 0.05. It is. So our generic conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. So there is evidence that body mass is lower after receiving as veritrol. Those were two of the tests done on the mice. And let's look at some others. Now we have a test to see if locomotor activity changes after treatment. So again, is the p-value less than or equal to the significance level. So is 0 0.980 less than or equal to 0 0.05? No, so we do not reject H sub zero, and you have to state it as do not reject. We never accept the null hypothesis. 
we just say that there is not enough evidence to cause us to reject it. The data do not provide any evidence that Resveratrol affects activity level. So now in part D, same thing we're seeing if mean food intake changes. So we check P value less than or equal to significance level. So it's 0 0.035, less than or equal to 0 0.050, and you might want to have the significance level out to the same number of decimal places as the p-value, because it might, it might make it easier to compare. And yes, it is. So we reject the null hypothesis, and there is evidence that food intake is different after receiving resveratrol. Now this next one, we want to see if we're going to have the same response if the significance level is 1%. So we look at A, it's point. 0, 0.013 less than or equal to 0 0.010, that would be no. So that result would change. 0 0.007 less than or equal to 0 0.010, yes, that result would not change. Part C would not change, part D would change. So only The result in B will be significant at the one percent level. And that was the one on body mass. So for the next one, we're just looking at the wording of the generic conclusion. So in a hypothesis test, H sub 0 is mu equal 18, H sub A is mu is greater than 18, we obtain a p-value of 0 0.016, using alpha equal 0 0.05, what do we conclude? Well, 0 0.016, is that less than 0 0.05? And it is, so our conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. C and D are never viable options. We never reject or fail to reject the alternative hypothesis. It's always the null. So in this one, same options, same p-value, what are we going to conclude? We are going to conclude that there is evidence that mu is greater than 18. 
A is never an option. We never accept the null hypothesis. 